So the innovation part to us is uh, McMaster's vehicle for uh, innovation, uh, technology transfer, uh, knowledge transfer, and commercialization of research uh, results. Our uh, mandate is to support economic development, to support the commercialization of research and innovation as well as to develop these real estate assets here. The atrium is the hub for the park. Uh, this space that we're next to right now uh, houses a very uh, eclectic mix of tenants and allows them to interact with each other in, uh, in, in the hub, in the atrium space. Our role at the Innovation Factory is really to be a catalyst for innovation. That means helping entrepreneurs, but it also means bringing in an ecosystem of volunteer mentors, small, medium enterprises, the institution, McMaster, uh, the institutions McMaster and Mohawk, and bringing all those people together to help form an innovative community. The benefits of being an MIP is, you know, first the building itself is just a beautiful building to, uh, to show customers. Uh, you know, the, the atrium out uh, in front of our office is where we host a lot of events. Uh, the fact that it was a factory before really highlights the transition of Hamilton from a purely industrial economy into a knowledge-based economy. So we've had people come through here who actually built appliances as their summer jobs. Well, I think some of our graduates now are working on technologies that will be the foundations for either the next companies we see or to help innovate these existing companies out there, from robotics to advanced manufacturing to software to health sciences. All of those are businesses that exist in Hamilton today. Uh, I expect us to be the leading edge of that. We're going to have uh, space available uh, over the coming year for our students, uh, expanded space uh, for our students. If they've got a startup idea, if they've got a small business, they'll be able to come here and work out of that space uh, and, and receive the support and mentorship they need. We're calling that space the Foundry. Foundry will be uh, not just space to work, work out of, but there'll be equipment. Uh, depending on the type of startup that a student might be working on, we want to provide as much uh, of that type of um, equipment and support that they need to, to get their product off the ground. This is really a partnership, uh, in all senses of the word, between McMaster Innovation Park, with the Innovation Factory, with McMaster University, uh, with other partners as well, including Mohawk College. Um, they're all needed to make this work. And from the community generally, um, students will need and uh, help and support from mentors, successful entrepreneurs in the community. So it's really, when you say a community effort, this is truly one of those things. So Mark is McMaster Automotive Resource Center. We emphasize the resource as opposed to research. It is designed to be a resource to the automotive industry. It is the home of what we think is the most advanced research in uh, electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles in Canada. It is, we believe, a major step forward in terms of developing the innovation park and positioning McMaster as the lead university in Canada in automotive uh, research. We actually have a master plan that uh, encompasses uh, 10 buildings on this 36 acre site over a period of 10 to 15 years. It's hard to predict the exact rate of development, but we would expect uh, in the 10, next 10 years to see that many buildings uh, and probably 1,200 to 1,500 people working on site. It's, it's really part of the overall mission of the university to help develop and commercialize research that the research scientists at McMaster uh, are, are working on. The Fraunhofer Institute system was created in Germany after Second World War. These institutes exist to bridge the gap between fundamental basic research, applied research, and the private sector. In other words, their output must have direct implications on the private sectors, on companies. So the particular project centers that we are talking about focuses on biomedical engineering and advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing of human cells. So mass production of human cells which could be used 
for therapeutic and diagnostic purposes. People just need to be reminded of the opportunities that they can create through their own efforts to take good technology and commercialize it and develop it and turn it into something that you and I can use every day and that can help provide wealth and economic well-being for our community. It's great to have a community that is a fabulous place in which to live and work and play, but for this community to move forward, we have to add something to that. We all have to realize and we all have to make it true that this is a great community in which to invest. You have to put dollars in the ground. Ultimately, you have to put dollars in the ground. You have to build the facilities, you have to invest the money and the equipment, and to do that, you need people who are willing to take risk, not throw money away, but take an informed risk. Understand the potential for the ideas that they have. Be inspired to take that risk. And we need more people willing to do that. We need more people like George Westinghouse, who first pioneered these lands and developed them for industrial use. We do things right, and students are actively working on startups in this space. And if they're actively, if we're providing connections for them in the community, they're much more likely to be successful. And if they have these community ties, they're much more likely to keep their businesses in Hamilton. So it's not just about helping students um, develop uh, their startup ideas, but it's uh, about helping them establish uh, their success and their startups in the Hamilton community, and that's good for everyone. The idea is that we're, we're creating an opportunity here to diversify the economy of Hamilton, to go beyond steel production, to create a new industry with a significant and tremendous opportunity for growth. Growth in terms of job creation, all levels of job creation, white colors, blue color, but most importantly, it's a high-tech, uh, futuristic, if you like, something that we think is going to be extremely important in the next 5, 10, 15 years. So we're looking at the future. We're looking at the future. Let's all become more familiar with some of the great entrepreneurs of our era, and there have been many. Young people know the story of, of Steve Jobs. Know those stories, get in touch with those stories. And in your personal life, you may not have the scientific or technical acumen, you may not have yourself the great idea, but maybe you've got the ability to, to put the funding together to support some student you know, or some young person you know who does have an idea which you think is compelling. Help bring that person along to the next stage. Get the right financial advice, get the right legal advice, and let's start making things happen.